Is the light fine? So, no one asked, but... Today I have my special guest again. Because apparently I'm not able to talk on my own. And Jürgen said my video was so bad. We have to do it together. It was horrible. I mean, honestly guys, you never want to see this. <laughs> do you want to help or do you want cloud? I want... I mean... Follow... <laughs> so we've been in this industry for like five years maybe like together yes but it's already 2021 and we started together 2016 okay <sighs> structure is really hard because we need to do a little time travel Okay, so let's start with the beginning. So today is all about how, first of all, you started with your Instagram and, and also maybe why. Um, and about the lessons we learned along the way. So maybe you can take inspiration from our lessons and don't do the same mistakes and learn from our mistakes. We started dating in 2011. 2012, I was on a trip in Egypt. I discovered this new app, Instagram, and it was the editing app back in the day because you could put a vintage fo filter on your photos, which was revolutionary. Unseen, like that was so cool. I remember I, I put a vintage filter on a photo and was like, boom, like the shot of all shots. Anyway, so I downloaded it to edit my photos and it was weird because I uploaded a photo by accident and suddenly I would get likes and before that I would upload photos on Facebook and get, I don't know, five likes, two likes, like 10 likes was already like. And by the time that I met you, you had a lot of photos on Facebook, a lot of photo albums on Facebook. Yeah, I had so many photos. Of photos like <laughs> and nobody looked at them. Insane. So then I uploaded and I started getting these likes, like one picture got seven likes, the other got 12 likes and I was like, whoa, this is more than I get on Facebook. <laughs> And then, but I never like thought anything of it and I continued studying. I was just uploading random pictures, like whatever I did for Facebook, I would also do or post on Instagram with the filter, the magic filter. And I would get uh, some followers. Like I remember when I had 400 followers and a friend of mine from like Southern Germany, she had 600 followers. And I was like, how did she do it? Like 600 followers, that's a lot. And then throughout my college, I would attract followers and I would post really random stuff like me and my friend getting coffee, uh, I don't know, me working out, me partying, like really random photos. And I would get more and more followers. And I remember the day I reached 1000 followers. I was like, this is it. I made it. Back then, like, nobody had 1,000 followers. I mean, I was so special. It's like, oh my god, I'm... I'm I had maybe five. Yeah, really? <laughs> I, I don't know. I discovered that people are really interested in my before and after because I lost quite a lot of weight when I came back from America. I started working out, blah, blah, blah. So I posted before and after pictures and people went crazy. Like, I got so many messages. So I started to really focus on sports working out i remember when i had 1000 followers i was like 10k and that's it like then i like really made it and then i got 10k and then i was like okay 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 and 100k and that's it <laughs> and then <laughs> and then <laughs> one million <laughs> the most exciting thing back then was the app also worked so differently the Instagram was not new I think Instagram especially in the United States has been around for quite a while even even back then and there was really like different ways of being able to get attention to a profile like I remember you did a lot of even follow for follow was a thing or, or you you yeah. were you were doing these things with other accounts that that also had around 10k where you would like introduce that account 
to your community the and they would time. they would introduce your profile to their community and you don't believe how many people you would or how many new followers you would gain from from just doing this all right, all right, all right, all right. i was studying and i did finance so i was very serious and very smart and people in my finance class and even my teachers would make fun of me like for example they they caught me a lot paying attention they're like oh what are you doing instagram and then the entire class laughed and i was like <laughs> And the same people came to me years later and congratulated on my success. <laughs> Fair enough. 2014, I finished my studies and I was like, ugh, what am I gonna do? I was kind of burned out because it was really exhausting. I did a, I did a um, bachelor and a traineeship at the same time for three years. I was working and studying at the same time. And I had also three other jobs. So I was really working nonstop, studying nonstop. Huh. So when I did my traineeship, I was at work and I had to clock in and clock out. And I had to do my eight hours every single day, which would be fine. I mean, today I work much more, but back then there was nothing to do. Like in the first few weeks and months, I used the time to study and like do whatever. But uh, after a while I was just like, <sighs> This is like really, like really pointless. And then I started to read blogs. And I remember one of the first blogs I read was Milena's, who is like one of my best friends for years now. But back then I was like, oh, this is so cute. She like talks how she comes home from school and how she uh, does her homework and like what she eats and i was like this is so cute she's so cute and i started reading blogs which was a thing back then and then i got my first few requests which i didn't even know that people would pay money for that like why would people pay money for that i had no clue about marketing i was a finance girl full on and i was like hmm so I think for my very first job, I charged 25 euros. Yeah, I actually remember it, yeah. And I already had 50,000 followers. I think nowadays you get four figures for that. Three hours of work with one picture, that's a pretty good deal. And then I remember, I remember it so well. So after I finished college, I was in a club partying and I got this request for a random brand and they were like, we agree to 10 pictures and we pay you 400 euros and i was like like mind blown i remember i was so happy because that that was my monthly salary from one of the jobs that i had and then i started getting more and more jobs and like i said very little money compared to today and then once i reached 100k i think that was in 2015. i remember back then my friend asked me what would be like your dream campaign like what campaign would you have to do to be like i made it and i was like i think guess i mean back then you know i wasn't thinking about luxury so. i mean i even remember you hated wearing jeans like you you oh my god i was wearing jeans I was only wearing leggings. Yeah, like and you even like for years. Yeah. I would never wear jeans, which is so funny. Like what the fuck? I remember I bought my first jeans. I think 2016. It was a big deal. Wow. Yeah. So I remember I switched from sports to fashion, and my followers were not amused. They're like, oh, I miss this blah 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 but i'm so happy i stick to it i stuck to this so i don't remember how many followers i had but i remember that i posted a shoe a sneaker and i put a affiliate link and i made a revenue or i created a revenue of over 100,000 for this retailer and i was mind blown because i didn't know that people would actually listen to what I suggest. So if we come to lessons, what we learned from this, I think my biggest lesson is that I listened to my intuition. I didn't follow the strict path of like, you know, bachelor, master's degree, da da da. I decided to take a break and to discover what I like and not be so obsessed with like a perfect resume. 
And then what I also learned is, I mean, I did have a lot of people laughing at me, not in a mean, mean way, but I mean, it was like kind of lovingly. And I was really doubting myself. I was like, oh, maybe it's so stupid what I do, blah, blah, blah. And I'm so glad I didn't listen to the people who laughed about me, to the critics, to the people who made fun of me. I mean, there were so many people on Facebook making fun of me. And I'm just so glad I didn't let it get to me. So if you do whatever you do, listen to yourself and ignore them so you have stories like me to tell about them years later. Mom and Daddy from the sun. I never did Instagram with the atten intention to make this my living. I really had my big year in 2016 when I took it was so funny because back then not many people did it but I took like very tumblery photos and a lot of people in my environment they were like oh let's take senior photos let's take senior photos like in a way they meant that they would take photos for example where you're moving and you get a snapshot while moving which is so like basic today but back then it was new and people were like oh my god it's so cool so cool so that year I grew I think 600,000 followers or something like I grew a lot and I would get more you know jobs but all of them super commercial so now we get to part two which is taking it more seriously and also well especially becoming more strategic because I was absolutely not strategic about it and actually it was the year when I even like I, I made the decision or we made the decision that it's time okay either you need someone who becomes your like photographer or, or assistant i don't know um, but you needed someone who was taking your pictures i was also already doing all the communication with uh, like the, the brands that would reach out oh my god i remember that i was literally driving to your work so we could take photos in your lunch break it yeah. was like the worst light and i was always so ah. i quit my job i still remember when i was driving in the car with my parents and I told my father and he was really not amused and it was the first time that we did or we decided to do the international fashion weeks I mean we did Berlin fashion week which was so like it was such a fun time because I remember I got my first trip with a cosmetic brand and it was unpaid it was like I don't know I mean it wasn't a bad trip but back then i told everybody like oh i'm like oh my god this cosmetic brand invited me to berlin fashion week it was like so like I mean, the highlight of my life and it was so exciting and i remember that i would i would then on friday join you i was i was oh, taking yeah. the train from from hamburg to to berlin mm -hmm. and i just remember remember we went to this after party and for me also it was this whole new world and suddenly you would see these german celebrities on the same party and you were like wow is this really happening like am i really here like i really thought i'm the coolest girl no and i don't think that anymore <laughs> and do you remember when we when we then went to the breakfast and there was all these yeah! youtubers like big youtubers from and Germany. i was trying to take like a sneaky photo i think i i think it started with a fashion week in february where jess came along and i wasn't invited to any shows like no shows and back then there was this sneaky little trick that you go to the fashion show anyway and honestly i was like nobody knows me i just pretend i'm invited so i would literally go i remember so well i would go to a show with my friends and people would take photos of us and then one of these photos ended up on vogue and they were like guests of the show and oh my god now that i think back it's so cringe and embarrassing but it was also so much fun like <laughs> It was literally fake it till you make it. But then, you know, I was like, I have so many followers. Like, why am I not invited to any shows? And then we started to think about positioning. And I had drinks with a friend and this girl was like, babe, um, have you ever thought about your positioning? And I'm like, what do you mean? And she was like, well, if you want to work with the big brands, maybe you should stop advertising veggie chips like i love 
veggie chips. If they pay me 400 euros to promote veggie chips, I'll do it. Well, I had no idea what positioning or branding is. And now listen very closely because every single person has his or her personal brand slash branding. You who's watching, you have your own personal branding. So what is branding? You know, um, after this girl told me about branding, I ordered all these books and like I did all the research, but you find so little information about personal branding, at least back then. And I really learned so much about branding that I feel like now it's kind of my biggest strength. Personal branding is everything that you do and that you show that you do and the coffee you drink, the brands you wear, the style, I mean everything what makes you you is your personal branding. So what do people associate with you? You know it's very interesting to discover even if you're not working in Instagram. I think it's very important also in real life to be aware of your branding. I did the shift from very commercial profile and jobs to high end. The question is, why do we want to work in luxury? We already knew the names of, of these big fashion brands and, and you were even, even also wearing pieces because you bought them. But uh, there was just this huge gap between wearing it because you bought it and being invited by like the brand. Like actually invited. <laughs> as a guest of the brand. But how do you get from veggie chips, cereals and whatever I advertised <laughs> to the luxury brands. I got so many rejections. Like I would send out emails for fashion weeks and nobody would respond, like nobody. And we had a huge list of huge. people that we thought is the right person to talk to and like send out these emails, send out, send out, sometimes even with a follow up or no reply. It had to do with luck and opportunity. And the luck was that when I spent time in New York, I met somebody. He is best friends with the Chloe PR. So he was the one who introduced me to the Chloe PR when I had literally no luxury brand in my client portfolio. And I had the meeting and the guy was super nice and I never forget that he opened the first door. And then, and then you really have to stick to your desired branding. But at the same time, you have to decline all the commercial jobs. I said no to so much money that I think I even cried at one point. I'm from a middle class family, but I had four jobs, like I mentioned before, and I would earn 1000 euro per month. You didn't know where this was going. So I think one lesson from that is to... Have the discipline also to... Also or maybe the, the, the... Trust and belief. Yeah. You really trust in something blind. And be patient. Like, yeah. Because there's also no one really can tell you. And that's with, I think, a lot of things, no matter what you do. Like, no one promises you that at one point you will get no. the thing. But, but, but also it took you... me years for some brands. Like, it would, took me three years to work with Louis Vuitton. It took me two years to work with Dior. It took me... I mean, it took me four or five years to work with MS, you know, like, so it's funny because a lot of people, they come to me, they're like, oh my God, Xenia, you're so smart because you focused on growing first and then on branding. And I'm like, that was not on purpose. That was just because I had no clue. I think if I had started earlier, I would, I don't know. I mean, hätte, hätte, Fahrradkette, we say in German, which means if, 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 uh, bike. <laughs> Bicycle chain. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't make sense. Well, you just have to go out there and and like take the risk. It's also a lot of learning by doing. Like, I was never. I'm. I'm. I mean, up to today, I would never call myself a photographer, but I kind of learned to take, to, my... <laughs> to take some. <laughs> Listen to my. To to press a button after my very clear instructions <laughs> okay the truth is if you want to hear the truth like a lot of things don't go as planned along the way like a lot of things and especially when you work with your partner i mean there was a time when we like 
Oh yeah, when we you started, you really wanted to end it. I would no. never. <laughs> no, but when we started working together, that didn't work. Like we literally were on the <laughs> verge of breaking up. We we're very happy together, right? Since. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's go to what you can learn from this and how to grow today. Instagram works very different than it did years ago. It's definitely not as easy as it was years ago, but <laughs> when I started and really started focusing on Instagram, people were like, what are you doing? It's too late. It's oversaturated. What are you doing? There's no space for more influencers. And that's what people also will say to you today. And let me tell you one thing. It's never too late to grow. And even up to this day, I mean, every year I see people blowing up for different reasons. And you just need to figure out what it is at this time that makes people want to follow you. Back then we also didn't have stories. You know, I think stories is such a good hack to grow, to really show your personality. Like if you try, and I know this is a mistake that a lot of people do, like a lot. And even it also happened to me, you know, where I tried to copy like a super minimalistic vibe, which I love, I, I personally love it, but it's not me. And I think long-term you can only succeed if you really do what's really true to you. And nowadays everybody takes good photos. I mean, you can't, win with just good photos. So you can really only stand out with your personality. Connect with other people, you know, leave comments, interact, engage. And you know, I, the good news is micro-influencers become more and more popular. You know, I have my own brand. Sometimes people with millions of followers post our stuff and it sells less than somebody with 900 followers posts our stuff, which is crazy if you think about it. But the thing with smaller accounts is that they can reach their followers better and this is why it's so important to connect with your audience make sure the quality of your photos is good like that's so simple but so many people don't do it like unless that's your thing yeah maybe it's your thing <laughs> if that's you, your thing with you the bad photos <laughs> is it your thing use reels video content will become more and more important i mean so, instagram even put it like as the middle button of uh, of the whole app you can be pretty sure that if instagram introduces a new feature they will push it so you better get on that real wagon and try to create unique content with good light good outfits good music it's actually so easy this i feel like we should do this more often it was so good <laughs> No. But guys, if you have questions, just yeah. let us know. Because I thought it could be so cool if we do this as a series. Leave us questions in the comments. I would love to spill all the secrets about everything. My next video will be about how I'm earning money and how much money I'm paying myself, how much salary we get. And subscribe. Pretty please. Do you think it was better? That's a good question. I think yes.